In today's video, we're going to go over a brief introduction as to what power is in physics. And then most importantly, we're going to go over five different example problems where we'll be calculating power, work, time, and force, and all that stuff you need. And before we get started, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel, Step by Step Science. Get all of our excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. When I look at my YouTube analytics, I see that so many people who watch my videos have not subscribed. Please subscribe. Support my channel, click the notification bell so you don't miss anything. Give us a thumbs up, leave us a nice positive comment, and don't forget to share this video. But most important, please subscribe. Okay, and I made a bunch of other teaching and learning materials, which you can find at my Teachers Pay Teachers website. The link is in the description below. Whether you're looking for notes, practice problems, uh, uh, example problems with all the solutions, a bunch of other stuff, labs you can do with TP, uh, PHET interactive simulations, it's all there. The link is in the description below and i've made other videos for power which you can link to in the upper right hand corner of this video but most importantly what is power now i came up with three or i just found three different definitions and i think uh, maybe the one you see in your textbook the most is that the rate at which work is done okay rate means time and then we might see this one that's a little bit more specific and kind of a mathematical definition it's the ratio of the work done the time it takes to do the work. And a lot of times, I think the easiest thing to say is it's just how fast work is done. If you can do a lot of work in a short period of time, then you would be considered very powerful. You would have a higher power rating, a higher power output. So it's how fast work is done. And going back kind of to this second definition, the equation is simply that power is equal to the ratio of the work divided by the time. The work you do divided by the time, and we simply write that down as power. P is for power, work measured in joules, time measured in seconds. And the units for power, when we divide the work in joules and the time, we get a joule second. We could write it like that. But we don't write that down just like that. We write down and we say that the units for power is a watt. And a watt is a joule second, and one watt of power is when you do one joule of work in one second. So officially, the units for power are the watt, or the unit for power is the watt. Okay? No corny jokes about watts and what is a watt. Okay, now, you, most people have seen and heard of watts because, like, for example, you see them around in, in everyday life. Here's a hair dryer. This hair dryer has a different power output, different power rating, depending on whether it's plugged into a 220, a 230, or a 240 volt outlet. But you can see here it has 930 watts, 1,000 watts, and 1,100 watts. That basically means that, that you kind of think of that as being a stronger hair dryer, probably gets hotter, and um, it converts electrical energy into heat and, uh, and, and other things to run that hair dryer, the fan and stuff like that, at a rate of, for example, 1,100 joules per second, 1,100 watts. And then most people have also seen and heard watts with light bulbs. This is a 40 watt light bulb. That means that this light bulb converts 40 joules of electrical energy into light and heat every second. 40 watts, 40 joules per second. Okay, here we go. Here is example number one. We're just talking about light bulbs. This is a light bulb, and when it runs for five minutes, it converts 2,000 joules of electrical energy to heat and light. What's the power rating? Okay, we're simply going to get out our equation, which is that the power is equal to the work divided by the time. And that means the work that it does is 2,000 joules. Now, the time is five minutes, and power is watts per, joules per second. So you got to convert the time to seconds. And that means it's 2,000 joules divided by 300 seconds. And that gives us 6.67 watts. That is a 6.67 watt light bulb. It converts 6.67 joules of energy every second. Okay, that's number one. Now number two. This one, we're going to be counting how much work. So we have a jogger. The jogger is going to run up those stairs. And when the jogger runs up those stairs in 9.5 seconds, she is going to have a power, out, a power output or a power rating where it's going to exert 2,500 watts of power. We want to know how much work she does. So we're going to get out our power equation, and we know that up here, this is work. You can see this is 2,500 watts. This watts is the unit. W is the unit for power, which is the watt. 
This W here is the work, which we measure in joules, so be careful you don't get those confused. We want to solve for how much work she does, which is W. We get out the magic physics triangle. We're going to cover up the W. And if these two values are next to each other, the P and the T, then we're going to multiply them. So that means that the work is equal to the power divided by the time. That should make sense because watts is joules per second and time is in seconds. It's going to cancel the seconds and left with the number of joules. When you do 2,500 joules of work in every second and you do that for 9.5 seconds, then you do 2020, excuse me, 23,750 joules of work. Okay, we calculated power, we calculated work, and now, of course, we're going to calculate time with this power, with this crane. We have a motor in a tower crane, and it has a power output, a power rating of 150,000 watts. You can do that much joules of energy, joules of work every second, and it's going to do that, and it's going to, we want to know how long it takes for the crane to do 450,000 joules of work. All right. So we are going to, how long means time? So we're going to get out our equation. We're going to put that into our magic physics triangle again. And you can see we want to solve for time this time. And then we have the watts, okay, the, excuse me, the work divided by the power. And that's work divided by power. And that means it does 450,000 joules of work. And it has a power rating of 150,000 watts. And therefore, it takes three seconds to do that. Okay? There you go. So we converted, we converted, we calculated for power, we calculated, calculated for work and time. And now we're going to do something a little bit more involved. We have this crane, and the crane is going to lift this container, which has a mass of 7,500 kilograms. It's going to lift it to a height of 6.5 meters. It's going to take eight seconds to do that. And we want to know how much work the crane does. And what is the power output? And remember, the power equation has work in it because it's work divided by time. We're not given the work here in joules. We are given the mass and the distance so we can calculate the work. So we're going to use this equation to calculate the work. Now, we're not actually given the force. We are given the distance at 6.5 meters. But we need to calculate the force. And the force is basically, or not basically, but is the weight of this object. And we know that we can use Newton's second law to calculate the force of gravity is equal to the mass times the acceleration due to gravity on the surface of the Earth, 9.81 meters per second squared. And when we calculate the weight, okay, the force due to gravity, that is the weight, and we have to apply an equal force but in the opposite direction to lift it. So we calculate the force of gravity, 7,500 kilograms times 9.81 meters per second squared. That's kind of a constant for at the surface of the Earth. And we find out that that object has a force of gravity, or force due to gravity, of 73,575 newtons. That is also what we call the weight of that object. And when this crane lifts it up, it has to apply this much force in the opposite direction to lift that object up at a constant velocity. So we can calculate the force that the crane applies times the distance, and we will get the amount of work that it does because its work is force times distance, and it does just about 478,000 joules of work. So now we know the work, and we know the time is 8 seconds, so it's pretty simple to calculate the power. The power is the work, which we calculated in the previous slide, divided by the time, which is 8 seconds. And you can see when you divide 478,000 divided by 8 seconds, then you get a power rating for the crane of 60,000 watts or 60K watts. All right, so that's kind of a multi-step process where you got to take the mass, convert it to the force, multiply it times the distance to get the, uh, 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 multiply it times the distance to get the work, and then you divide by the time to get the power. Okay, now, the last one is a common example that you see often in schools, and I like to call this, we do this with my students, how powerful am I? So the question is, how much power can a person exert doing a particular task? How fast can you do work? Well, we do that by running up the stairs. So we're going to run and take our bodies. How much work do you exert? Excuse me, how much power do you exert when you run up a flight of stairs? All right. So we start out like this. 
We want to know basically how much work we do on our body and how fast we can do that work. When you go up the stairs, you're lifting your body, you're lifting a mass up and that's the mass of your body. So first thing we do is we write down the mass of our body. We pick a number and like you want to write, use your own mass and just make one up. 55 kilograms is an average high school student, I suppose. And then we want to figure out how far we're going to go. And we that's the vertical height of those stairs. It's not the length along the stairs. But the vertical height of those stairs, we're going to say that we're going to run up is 6.5 meters. So we'll change in elevation. And then the next thing is the time. So we just record the time with a stopwatch, 2.25 seconds. And now we can start calculating the power. Now remember, power is work divided by time. Is work is force times distance. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to use these three equations. This is the power equation. This is the work equation and this is the force equation. The first thing we're going to do is kind of work backwards is we're going to use this equation to calculate the force. And the force that we're lifting is the mass of our body, the weight of our body. And that's 55 kilograms times 9.81 meters per second squared. And that means if you have a mass of about 55 kilograms, then your weight is 540 newtons. If you're not quite sure what the difference is between mass and weight, I have a video for that. The link is in the upper right hand corner. So you're taking your body up the stairs and the weight of your body is 540 newtons. That means your legs have to apply a force of 540 newtons upwards to lift you up the stairs. Now we want to know how much work do they do. The work they do is the mass, excuse me, the force that they're lifting up times the distance. And we said the stairs have a height of 6.5 meters. When you multiply 540 times 6.5, you get 3,510 joules. Okay, so that's how much work you do. So first we use this equation to calculate the force that we're applying. Then we use this equation to calculate how much work that we did. And finally, now we can make it back to power because we know the work now and we know the time, we measure the time. And therefore the power is going to be 3,510 joules divided by 2.25 seconds. And that means that when you run up those stairs with your body in that amount of time, you exert a power rating of 1,560 watts. Okay, and I think a horsepower is 746 watts. So you do just about two horsepower. All right, so there you go. I hope you found that video helpful. We went over a brief introduction to what is power, how fast work is done, the units, the watt. And then we did five different nice, clear examples step by step. All right. Thank you so much for watching. If you found that video helpful, please do all of the following five things. Please don't forget, once again, to subscribe. Click the notification so you don't do, uh, miss anything. Give us a thumbs up, leave a nice positive comment, and don't forget to share this video. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe. We will see you in the next video. That's right. Don't forget to subscribe.